to have you. I want to welcome you to Live with Suje, but this is a special series, The Black Women in Ministry. The real Black Women in Ministry Thrive Fellows are with us. Each week, we've been introducing you to some dynamic, amazing women, and today, it does not stop. We have Reverend Pastor Leslie Kennedy. We have Pastor Delphine Vassar. We have the Reverend Ophelia Pond and the Reverend Monica Marshall. We welcome each of you today and it's so delightful to have you with us. Some of us have known each other a long time, but in this new relationship that's begun now five months into it, I just want to start out asking you, how does it feel to be a Black Women in Ministry Thrive Fellow? Monica. Good afternoon, Good Ambassador afternoon. Suje. Uh, it is a privilege and a joy and an honor to serve on this uh, cohort. It's been a blessing so far. We're so delighted to have you. And Pastor Delphine, we were like sisters in college some, we won't even say how many decades ago, you introduced me to the AME church. And so I was a Presbyterian and a Baptist and now I'm a Presbyterian AME Baptist. And so I thank you for taking me to St. Paul where we had such wonderful experiences. And out of that church, about 40 of us who sang in a choir together have become pastors around this nation. How does it feel now some four decades later to be a member of the Real Black Women in Ministry Thrive Fellows. It has been an honor and a blessing that you have called us together. And we thank God for the Lily Foundation who has brought us an opportunity to share and to learn from one another. Praise God. And in that same choir, Reverend Pond, was a woman named Grace Bowen, who also became a pastor. She went to the Lutheran Seminary. I went to Union Seminary. But then she became a Presbyterian pastor and then a moderator. We met at her home going. But there was something powerful about you that I was like, she's got to be a BWIM fellow. How does it feel now to be part of the real BWIM fellows? It feels absolutely fantastic. And I am truly blessed to be part of this fellowship and this cohort. I'm thankful for the Lilly Foundation and thankful for you, Sujay, for allowing me to be a part. We're so happy to have you. Now, Reverend Leslie with the Z. So I remember you because I'm Susan with the Z. So they'll remember me. You're Leslie with the Z. Pastor Leslie Kennedy, what's happening for you? How is this experience of the real BWIM Thrive Fellows? It is uh, just wonderful. I uh, really feel like um, I'm going full circle. I was blessed to um, have an experience from Lilly Foundation in the 90s when I first started in ministry. And now here I am mentoring with Black women in ministry and it is just fantastic. I am so very grateful. Yeah, Lily has done so much. And this is my second go round. I was one of the mentors in the first Black Women in Ministry program when I became a pastor some four decades ago. We also want to thank the Union Baptist Church in the village of Harlem, who we're collaborating with in partnership with Pastor Brian Scott for also being part of our home. They are the home for the BWIM Fellows. So how many years have you been in ministry and now you're mentoring another mentee? So I want you to tell me how many years and who your mentee is is and what her assignment is. Pastor Monica. I have been pastoring for 30 years and uh, I pastored the Black Memorial Church in Brooklyn. My mentee is Tanisha Lynn Calhoun. She just happens to be the director of Christian education at our church, but she is going to be working on a virtual Bible study for those who are at home and those who will ultimately come back into the church. Awesome. So you can give a shout out to your mentee, Pastor Delphine. Who's your mentee? How many years have you been in ministry now? And what's the assignment of your mentee? Uh, 31 years in rural ministry, um, entering into my first year in urban ministry. And I'm thankful to God to have with me the Reverend Deborah Jackson, whose area is concentration on um, Bible enhancement. And it's been an awesome experience. Awesome. And Pastor Althea, come on, tell us who your mentee is and how many years you've been in ministry. 
My mentee has now become an ordained minister. She is Reverend Lydia Timbo. Yes. I've actually, actually been ministering for over 25 um, years, but I've been pastoring now for two. Awesome. And we gave her a shout out because that's happened since we began this fellowship. So kudos to you and to Miss Lydia Timbo and Pastor Leslie. How many years in ministry and who's your mentee? Amen. I have been pastoring for 18 years, been in ministry for 25 years. And Kenyatta Moore is my mentee, wonderful young woman. And uh, she is working on a social media platform for us. Awesome. Now she's out of my home church and it's interesting. This is my 40th year in ministry being licensed by the Union Baptist Church of Harlem. So life really does go full circle now that they're housing this black women in ministry program. And some of the mentees come out of that ministry. So so what has it been like for all of you? I mean, we have been trailblazers. My generation certainly were trailblazers four decades ago. Do you feel like you've blazed the trail and what's the legacy you hope to leave Pastor Monica? Yes, I feel like I've blazed a trail. And uh, the legacy I hope to leave is that women know they can do anything that they put their minds to. And we've always had to do a little bit more, but we're up to the task. And I want to just give that impression to all those who come behind me. Now you're the daughter of a famous pastor. And so do you feel pressure kind of keeping the family name or do you feel you can make your own mark? This little light of mine, I'm going (laughs) to let it shine. I love it. I love it. Pastor, I feel your same question. Yes, I feel that I'm leaving a legacy that other women know that even though they might go through some struggles, that they can get beyond the struggles and that they can minister to God's people because God called them first and foremost before their denomination and that they can just continue to press on with courage and with faith. So do you feel you're a trailblazer or do you feel like you're walking some of the paths that have already been blazed for you? I think I'm a little bit of both walking some of the paths that have been blazed for me, but also clearing a path for others to come behind. Awesome. Awesome. Pastor Leslie, same question. What about legacy for you? Yeah, legacy for me uh, has been mentoring uh, young women who are going into ministry, who are thinking about ministry actually quite differently uh, from how I was raised uh, in the church in terms of uh, what they feel their call is. And so prayerfully, I am establishing a open space, a free space, and also um letting them know that it's okay to do it the way they feel God has called them. Awesome. What's the mentoring and coaching we need, which is why the program is so wonderful because they have a coach, really, a spiritual coach. Pastor Delphine, 30 years in, in rural ministry, now you're in the urban ministry in the AME Church, African Methodist Episcopal Church. What are you hoping your difference, your presence will make in terms of the legacy? To say it's okay to launch out in the deep, and to walk with God and know that he has his hand on you. Awesome. So let's talk about launching out into the deep. Where have you kind of jumped into the water, the deep waters with both feet? Where have you felt like you sometimes even had to walk on water and God came through for you? Pastor Monica. Well, I started out in a little church in Havistraw and it was just a different thing coming to Brooklyn and pastoring the oldest continuous black church in Brooklyn. But I've found out that people are more important than things. So I've just reached out to people and it's worked out. Wonderful. Pastor Leslie, when have you had to jump in with both feet and launch out into the deep? I, I literally feel like ever since I've been pastoring that uh, I have been out in deep water. And in fact, that was uh, my trial sermon. Uh, navigating in deep waters. That was the title. Uh, And uh, be careful. I really believe that your trial sermon is the way you're going to (laughs) walk. It seems like or swim or or drown, depending on what the analogy is. Yeah. So I I feel like I've been out there, but because I've been out there so long and been focused for so long, it's not intimidating. Okay, great, great. And Pastor Ophelia, have you had to jump into the water, deep waters? I think part of COVID-19 has just automatically placed me in deep waters Mm -hmm. as we continue to try to um, keep the congregation together, 
spiritually and emotionally and still find a way to serve the community. So I'm glad in the natural that I know how to swim because it helps me to be able to continue to tread waters during these times. Swimming is my favorite pastime. In fact, I just came back from a month. I, I rented a luxury apartment building that had an indoor pool and I swam every day, made the total difference in my whole countenance. What do you do for fun, Pastor Delphine? I love Christian television, um, particularly the, the cartoons and the old Tom and Jerry's. All right, I love it. Okay, and Pastor Monica, what do you do for fun? ES4 and uh, my music. Okay, I love it. And Pastor Ophelia, what do you do for fun? I like to draw and color and just spend time with my daughter and when I can swim and eat. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And Pastor Leslie, what do you do for fun? I, I love to travel and I have eight girlfriends that we typically go away every year. We were in St. Lucia uh, last January. So it's been over a year. We're kind of chomping at the bit, trying to figure out how we're going to be able to get together in 2021. Well, it's great to have great friends, and we hope this cohort will be one, a new set of friends for you and sister friends. But we're going to be right back because it is COVID, and we want to give you this message, a resource that we think will be helpful for you. Too blessed to be stressed. Stay right with us. If you haven't already, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and share it. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for joining us. You know, COVID is a tough time and a lot of people are feeling the pressure and of stress of life. But I have a book that I think will be a blessing to you. It's called Too Blessed to be Stressed. And the subtitle is Words of Wisdom for Women on the Move, but it's also for men on the move. And it's scriptural steps to bouncing back from burnout. I encourage you to get it. It's still a bestseller some 10 years later. You can get it on Amazon or wherever books are sold online. But too blessed to be stressed. I want you to know you are too blessed to be stressed. And so please obtain a copy. I hope it will be a blessing to you. Welcome back. You're here live with Sue J and we're all the way live and in living color. We have four amazing, I mean, amazing black women in ministry who are part of the real black women in ministry thrive fellowship cohort from the Lilly Endowment with Union Baptist Church. And we are so delighted to have them with us. We left you last time talking about what do you do for fun, but the real stands for relationships, expanding, equipping, empowering, a for access and altitude and L for legacy and life skill preparation. So what is the relationship that you hope will happen as we grow out of this cohort? You're sisters who never knew each other before now, but now we've been together five months and it looks like we're going to be together four years. What do you hope will happen in terms of sisterhood and why is that important to you? Reverend Leslie. I'm, I'm praying that I can be a blessing, not only to my mentee, but also to my sisters in the cohort, uh, and that they can be a blessing to me. You know, we it, the body of Christ is made up of a lot of different uh, aspects and resources, and prayerfully, with the 27 of us coming together, we will all benefit from that. We love it. Pastor Ophelia, what do you hope will happen for sisterhood and for this cohort with your participation? I'm hoping that I will be able to be a sister and a friend to all the women in the cohort and vice versa, that we will share together and even collaborate on some things together and just have a safe place and space where you can just call someone up and tell them how you feel and what's going on and they understand. Because oh, yeah. they're going safe through space. it too. Yeah, they've been yes. there. That's right. Safe space for sisterhood is so important. Pastor Monica, we will be collaborating. You know it's going to be all the way live. We just started. This is the first beginning part of it. What do you hope will happen for sisterhood and with your participation in the cohort? Well, I've learned so much about myself, even in the few weeks we've been together. And uh, I just hope that I can as well share something with those who are younger than I am and learn from those who are older than I am. Okay, and Delphine, what is, Pastor Delphine, what about yourself? That we can continue to glean from one another, that we will have a true love affair with God and with one another as sisterhood. So, 
Thank you for sharing that. So Pastor Monica, you talked about, you've learned a lot of things about yourself even just in these five months. So a lot of people think like we like preachers come out like preachers, like, you know, we just come out and we're preaching. So let's talk about some of the real humane things that happen for you. What, beyond just having fun, what's a typical day like in your life, like right now? Um, Pastor Monica, what's a typical day? A typical day was I went by my church and I realized that some things that I had left one way were not that way when I got there. And, uh, you know, life just happens, leaks and all of those things. And you just have to kind of smile and keep it going. So I just thank God that he gives us a thicker skin so that we can do what we have to do. So you really need my book, Too Blessed to Be Stressed. Yes. <laughs> it says words of wisdom for women on the move. So we're women on the move. Pastor Althea, you kind of give us a typical day in your life. What's a weekday like? A weekday is balancing um, um, my um, classes as I teach as a school media specialist in the Roosevelt Union Free School District, as well as balancing ministry, um, checking in with uh, my key people, my leadership on how everyone in the congregation is doing, what's going on with the building, um, getting up to read the mail and so forth and so on. So it's a little bit of a balancing act, but with God, all things are possible. So we had a great model in Deborah. She was multidimensional. She was the first female prophetess, first female judge, and she was a wife. I mean, so judges thought that it was enough to give her mention in fourth chapter, a lot of verses. Pastor Leslie, what do you, what are lessons you learned from Deborah in terms of her multidimensionality that are important for you? Well, you know, Deborah was uh, a Renaissance woman. Uh, in, in terms of she did not fit the mold of women during that time. Mm -hmm. And because she was, um, I, the thing I love about Deborah is it, a lot of times in scripture, uh, women are described based on who they're married to or who their father is. Deborah stands alone. And uh, even though she is married and a mother, she stands solid on her own, doing her thing, a judge, uh, a mediator. Uh, and how do you, you apply know, that to your life? One that empowers. Well, I, I am bivocational. Mm -hmm. uh, I manage a intergenerational tutoring program in the New York City public schools for first and second graders. And wow. uh, the tutors are senior citizens. Mm -hmm. So it has been very interesting during COVID because we're doing everything virtually. Yeah. Uh, and everybody's overwhelmed. And yeah. so I find myself not only ministering to the tutors, but ministering to the principals and the assistant principals, ministering to the parents. And then, you know, talking about the children, these are young children, first and second grade, and the stress that they are going through as a result yeah. of COVID. So, so that has been a challenge. And it's an opportunity for learning as well and for growth for everyone, even though it's challenging. <laughs> let's, let's talk a little more then. Let's go back to so multidimensional. Some of us are bivocational. Uh, sometimes it's for salary and sometimes it's just because we're multi-gifted and our talents can't fit in one particular place. So we let's talk about Deborah. She's the Renaissance woman, another R word. We gave everybody an R word or asked you to pick an R word um, as you came into this cohort. Pastor Monica, what would be your R word now? What was it when you began and what would be your R word now? Uh, my R word when I began would probably be running and now it would be rejuvenated. Ooh, okay. I love it. I love it. Pastor Althea, what was your R word then and what is it now? I think starting, it probably would have been resilience and now it's rebooting. Oh, oh I'm loving it. Pastor Leslie? The, who Mine gave has not changed. Mine always was re-envision uh, because I think we're just living in a season where we have to look at things differently. I love it. Pastor Delphine, what's your R word? What was your R word then and what's your R word now? rejuvenated and revived. Okay. And on that note, we're going to take a moment. If you need to rejuvenate or hydrate or take a moment, you do that right now. We'll be right back. Give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Give us your comments. We'd love to see them right here on YouTube and we'll be right back. 
hey, Black woman in ministry, it's an exciting time, Black History Month and throughout the year, we're always gonna be Black women in ministry. So I wanna commend to you a book from Judson Press. It's called The Sister's Guide to Survive and Thrive in Ministry. Words of wisdom from my 40 plus years in Christian ministry. Lessons I learned, things that I wish I could have had coming along the way. It's a short read, but it's a powerful read. And it has a foreword by Bishop Vashti McKenzie. So I'd love for you to get a copy of it. It's called The Sister's Guide to Survive and Thrive in Ministry. And it's also a sponsor for today. So thank you. And I hope you get it. And I hope it will be a blessing to you. We welcome you back to Live with Sue J. You're watching the Real Black Women in Ministry Thrive Initiative, the cohort for amazing women who are with us today, Pastor Delphine Vassar, Pastor Monica Marshall, Pastor Althea Pond, and Pastor Leslie Kennedy. It is all the way live, and we're so delighted that you joined us today. So now in our final segment, we talked about Deborah, but who's a biblical woman that you feel is a model for you, or is it a fusion of a couple of women? Pastor Monica, who stands out for you is the biblical woman that models you ah, or that you model hannah she was a praying woman and i believe prayer is the key wow but she prayed for some impossibilities have you seen some miracles happen in your ministry yes definitely okay praise god pastor Alfia, is there a biblical woman or women that stand out for you that you say i got some of that you know i thought about hannah Mm. And I also thought about Esther. Why? Esther, Esther was, she stepped out on faith. She prayed. She asked others to pray. And then she said, here, I'm going in and this is it. And she did it. She did and she it invited over. others to pray with her too. She brought she it into my hand. So we have a whole cohort who's going to be praying with one another, which for that power. Pastor Leslie, who are some of the models for you, biblical women? Uh, mine is Ziola Fad's daughters. Uh, and the, the reason for that is because they challenge the system. Yeah, yeah. Before that, women's names weren't even mentioned for the most part. They just said, and sh they shall call her woman. But then these five dynamic women came on the scene. So we have four dynamic women today. Delphine, who is one of your, or who are your role models in the Bible? Ruth and Hannah. I love it. I love it. So I cannot let this question go without asking you, who are some of your Black women role models? This is Women's History Month. We are Black, we are women, we are in ministry. Who stands out for you as a role model? I always put, I always start the month with my mother, my late mother. Of yes. course, I honor Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth and now Cicely Tyson. But I said my mother was my first teacher and she left such a legacy. Her, her business was just featured on CBS this morning. 59 years ago, a black woman had a vision to do something and is still going strong and blessed my life. Who's a black woman that stands out for you in this Women's History Month? Pastor Alfia. I would have to say my mother and also Pastor Sylvia Walker and my late friend, Grace, Reverend Grace Bowen. Okay, and who's Pastor Sylvia Walker? She was one of my mentors and one of my pastors as I was, um, didn't know was being prepared by God for where I am today. Awesome, awesome. Pastor Delphine. One being my mother, the other being Reverend Cecilia Williams Bryant and Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie. Awesome. Blessed women of God who also did so much and poured so much into our lives. Pastor Monica. One of the mothers of our church who passed, uh, Vertel Govan, who allowed me to ask questions when I was just a local preacher 40 years ago. Wow, wow, and Pastor Leslie. I have four, my mother, absolutely, positively. Uh, Maya Angelou, uh, the Reverend Dr. Elaine Flake, and Bishop Barbara Austin Lucas. Awesome, who's also a part of our BWIM cohort, and you'll be hearing from her in a separate show, but we are so delighted that you spent this time with us. Each of you is also a role model for us, and we're celebrating Black women in ministry, but we're also celebrating you, and we thank you for spending this time with us. Thank all of the people who made this possible, Lily Endowment, Union Baptist Church in the Village of Harlem, and each of you for staying with us. Please, if you haven't done it, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment, and share this show. It's been my delight to be with you. I'm Ambassador Susan Johnson-Cook, and this is Live with Sue J. See you next time.